hello welcome to another module in this massive open online course uh, so we are uh, we are looking currently at the least squares technique for uh, uh, finding the vector x in an over determined system of linear equations remember the number of linear equations is m the number of unknowns is n and m is greater than n okay let us now continue to look at applications of the least squares technique and one of the important applications at least one of the most uh, one of the very important modern applications in uh, wireless communications is in MIMO systems that is multiple input multiple output wireless systems. So, let us look specifically in a MIMO system uh, how to implement the receiver and remember what we are looking at, we are looking at applications of we are looking at applications of the LX technique and MIMO is basically you might remember this is multiple input. multiple output and this is an important wireless technology a very important wireless technology in fact many of you wireless technology this is used in 4G this is used in 5G this is used in Wi-Fi so on and so forth okay now what happens in the MIMO system as we might have already talked about couple of times in this you have a transmitter you have a receiver you have a receiver with multiple receive antennas that is the multiple outputs and then you have a transmitter with multiple transmit antennas that is the multiple inputs so this is the transmitter this is the receiver and you are transmitting the symbols x1 you can think of this using our notation x1 x2 xn y1 y2 ym or let me denote it by more appropriate notation for wireless system that is y1 y2 yr where r is the number of receive antennas and xt where t is the number of transmit antennas right and these are the various channels and then you will have the corresponding channel coefficients right. So, for instance between the transmit antenna 1 and the receive antenna 1 you have the channel coefficient which is H 1 1 right. So, we have a MIMO wireless system. So, these are the T antennas, these are the multiple T inputs, and these are the R receive antennas, these are the T transmit antennas, right. In fact, let me write this more. These are the T transmit antennas, these are the R. receive antennas and these are the R, these are the R outputs right. So, you have a multiple input multiple output system, you have R receive antennas on which you are receiving the outputs y1, y2, yr, you have the T transmit antennas on which you are transmitting the transmit symbols x1, x2, xt which form the input. So, you have multiple outputs, multiple inputs, this is the multiple input multiple output system. All right. Now, therefore, you have the channel vector. I can write the model. This is, in fact, often known as the system model y1, y2, yr. This is a neat demonstration of MIMO technology. You have the channel 
matrix which is R cross T is in your uh, right. So, this is your R cross T channel matrix, this is your transmit vector comprising of the T symbols and then you have the noise vector. right so this is basically your r cross t mimo this is your r cross t mimo channel matrix this is your vector y bar this is your vector x bar this is your vector n bar so, we have y bar equal to h x bar plus n bar that is your system model ok. This is often known as the this is often known as the system model in fact, this is your MIMO system model and h is your channel matrix. Now, the point is uh, and of course, what is H i j? It is worth repeating this H i j is the channel coefficient between receive antenna j and transmit antenna. This is the channel coefficient between receive antenna I am sorry receive antenna i and the transmit antenna j. For instance, h 1 2 that is the channel coefficient between receive antenna 1 transmit antenna 2 h 2 1 is the channel coefficient between receive antenna 2 transmit antenna 1 ok. Now, the question is how to determine x bar this is the receiver at receiver. So, you are transmitting the symbols x in x bar x 1 x 2 x t at the receiver how to decode right how to determine x bar given y bar right. So, you have and we have already seen if r equal to t and h is not singular that is h is invertible then x hat can simply be determined this is what we already seen in a previous module that is if h r equal to t that is h square matrix and h is invertible then we ha can form x hat that is the estimate of x x bar which is an estimate of x bar the transmit vector x bar is x hat equal to simply h inverse y because h is invertible. And at that point we had realized that we cannot use this if r is greater than the, then how do we do it and now we are at the right point to answer that question address that question. So, naturally since the inverse does not exist for r greater than t naturally one cannot use this for r greater than t. One cannot use this for r greater than t and for r greater than t now we know therefore, determine therefore, r greater than t determine or evaluate x hat as 
x hat is equal to remember we solve the approximation problem y bar minus h x bar norm square which is basically given by the least squares estimate which is h Hermitian h inverse h Hermitian h inverse h Hermitian y bar or which is also basically you can write this as h dagger y bar we already seen h dagger is nothing but the pseudo inverse of y bar h bar h uh, the matrix h that is h Hermitian h inverse into h and we are using the Hermitian because the channel matrix in general can be a complex channel matrix right. So, we are using the Hermitian. So, let us write this again this is h Hermitian h inverse h Hermitian y bar using the Hermitian instead of the transpose using the Hermitian operator h is typically a complex because h is typically we look at a communication system in the baseband and the baseband the channel can be typically pres, uh, represented as a complex channel right a complex channel coefficient right hence the matrix each channel coefficient h i j is complex and the channel matrix h is therefore naturally complex. So, we uh, typically we cannot use the Hermitian I mean typical the Hermitian covers the general case of a complex channel matrix ok. And this basically this receiver which is basically this is this is a name this is known as the zero forcing receiver right this is termed the zero this is termed the zero forcing or the ZF receiver because the name arises because it forces interference between the symbols to 0 right because it forces because it forces the interference between symbols to 0. Let me explain this you have y bar equals h times x bar plus n bar and therefore, if you look at any y i that is received on i th antenna that will be given as h 1 i I am sorry h i 1 times x 1 plus h i 2 times x 2 plus so on h i t times x t plus of course, n i and therefore, if you look at any receive antenna right if you look at any receive antenna i all the symbols x 1 x 2 up to x 3 are interfering right there is inter symbol interference for inter trans we can say inter transmit antenna interference at any receive antenna right. So, if you look at this all the symbols all symbols these are interfering these are interfering at each antenna i 
and now when you apply the zero forcing receiver so you have y bar equal to h x bar plus n bar now apply so now what we do is we apply apply the ZF receiver. So, we perform H Hermitian H inverse H Hermitian into Y bar, which if you apply the zero forcing receiver, you can see this reduces to H Hermitian H inverse H Hermitian substitute Y bar, Y bar equal to H X bar plus N bar. Now, if you multiply it out, you will see this is H Hermitian H inverse H Hermitian into H that is nothing but identity. So, you have X bar plus you have this matrix pseudo inverse of H let us call that H dagger H dagger times N bar this I can call that as N tilde. So, I can call this output this is the processed output Y tilde. So, the processed output y tilde equal to x bar plus y tilde equal to x bar plus n tilde and therefore, now if you look at this processed output, you can verify that this processed output is a T cross 1 vector because H Hermitian because the pseudo inverse is a T cross R matrix right. Therefore, now once you have this thing. you will have y 1 tilde y 2 tilde this is equal to n 1 tilde. And now you can see each y i tilde is simply equal to x i plus n i tilde. So, there is no interference among the different x i's at each y i tilde although y i has the interference from the different uh, x i's y i tilde depends only on x i each y 1 tilde depends only on x 1 y 2 tilde depends only on x 2 so on and so forth y n y r t tilde depends only on x t. So, therefore, using this receiver we have suppressed the interference the interference is reduced to 0 therefore, this is known as the 0 forcing receiver right. So, each y i tilde depends only on x i implies interference between the symbols of the different transmit antennas interference equal to 0. Therefore, this receiver therefore, Therefore, this receiver forces the interference to 0, hence it is termed as the zero forcing receiver. Hence, this is termed as the zero forcing receiver.
okay. This forces the interference between the symbols belonging to the different transmitter antennas to 0. Therefore, naturally this is termed as the 0 forcing receiver. Let us look at a simple example to understand this example. So, this is a very important concept and a very interesting as well as important as you are going to see. There are several applications. In fact, this is just one application in the context of wireless communication that we are looking at. So, consider the MIMO channel H equals let us write the channel matrix 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, just to make the example simple, I am considering a real channel matrix. Of course, you can see this is a simple example purely for the purposes of illustration. Practice the actual channel matrix will be complex. In fact, these will be sort of uh, the real and imaginary parts of each uh, complex number is going to be uh, some kind of a fixed point uh, decimal number, right. So, this is your channel matrix, this is what we are terming as the channel matrix and if you observe this, this is a 4 cross 2 matrix implies r equal to 4, this is a system that has r equal to 4 receive antennas and we have t equal to 2, right, t equal to 2 we have t equal to 2 transmit antennas and uh, so therefore, now let us start uh, evaluate the 0 forcing receiver that is h dagger which remember which is h hermitian h inverse h hermitian. So, first let us evaluate this matrix that is pseudo inverse matrix now h of course, here I can replace this by Hermitian by transpose. So, H transpose because this is a real matrix, this will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, and if you perform this, you will get this as 4, 10, 10, then you have 1 plus 4, 5, 5 plus uh, 1 plus 4, 5, 5 plus 9, 14, 14 plus 16. So, this is going to be the 2 cross 2 entry, this is going to be 30. Let us evaluate now H transpose H inverse. So, that will be 1 over the determinant 13 to 4 minus that is 120 minus 10 into 10 that is 100. So, this will be 120 minus 100 this is equal to 20 times interchange the diagonal elements negative of the off diagonal elements done that is the inverse of your 2 cross 2 matrix right. I mean these kind of tricks I mean one has to become more and more familiar with the techniques of linear algebra and hope I hope with enough practice you are also going to be uh, an expert at these kind of manipulations because as I told you linear algebra, uh, matrix algebra, mani matrix manipulation now is the standard in many, many fields of science and engineering be it wireless communication, be it signal processing, machine learning, data analysis, one has to be comfortable with matrices and linear algebra to have a better understanding. And in fact, uh, a much better grip on all these techniques ok. So, and therefore, now uh, we evaluate the matrix H transpose H inverse H transpose this will be given as 1 over 20 34 minus 10 minus 10 times 1 1 1 1 1 2 
three, four. Hopefully, got that right. One, two, three, four. Absolutely. So this is going to be one over twenty. Let's write down the elements. Um, thirty minus ten. That is twenty. 30 minus 20 that is 10, 30 minus 30 that is 0, that is minus 10 and the entries in the second row minus 10 plus 4 that is minus 6, minus 10 plus 8 that is minus 2, minus 10 plus 12 that is 2, minus 10 plus 16 that is 6, hopefully got those right and now divide them by 20. So, you will get uh, I guess you will get 1 half. 0 minus half minus 6 over 20 that is minus 3 over 10 minus 1 over 10 1 over 10 and 3 over 10 I guess that completes our this thing right. So, this is your H transpose H inverse H transpose. And now we apply this to the received vector. So, we have x hat remember this is going to be a t cross 1 or basically a 2 cross 1 vector. This is going to be x 1 hat x 2 hat which is essentially your h transpose h inverse h transpose into y bar which is going to be your h transpose h inverse h transpose and it is not difficult to see that y bar for this scenario will be contain 4 elements because you have 4 receive antennas. This is r cross 1 or this is a 4 cross 1 vector. Now, substitute this matrix that we just obtained which is 1 half 0 minus half minus 3 over 10 minus 1 over 10 1 over 10 3 over 10 y 1 y 2 y 3 y 4 and this is your x 1 hat x 2 hat and therefore, finally, if you look at this, you can simplify this as x 1 hat equal to y 1 plus half y 2 of course, 0 times y 3 minus half y 4 that is the estimate of symbol x 1 and your x 2 hat equals minus 3 over 10 y 1 plus or minus 1 over 10 minus 1 over 10 y 2 plus 1 over 10 y 3 plus 3 over 10 y 2 y 4 right. So, these are the estimates estimates of the symbols right. These are your these are your symbol estimates in the MIMO system. And this is basically nothing but essentially your ZF receiver, which forces the interference to 0. So, this is your ZF receiver, which forces the symbols between interference between the symbols from the different transmit antennas x1, x2, xt to 0. The only other point that I want to make here is that is basically you are obtaining the estimate x via a linear transformation of the receive vector y. Right. So, x hat equal to some matrix C times where, where C is basically H dagger 
और एच हरमिशन एच इनवर्स एच हरमिशन राइट सो एक्स हाइट इज अपटेन बाय लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ वाई बार वेन एवर द रिसीवर हैज सच अ स्ट्रक्चर दिस इज नोन एज अ लीनियर रिसीवर राइट सो द जी एफ रिसीवर इन द माइमो वायरलेस सिस्टम बिलोंग्स टू अ क्लास ऑफ रिसीवर नोन एज लीनियर रिसीवर राइट सो द ओनली अदर पॉइंट दैट आई वॉन्ट टू मेक ओवर हियर is that uh, if you look at this thing you have x hat equal to h hermitian uh, which is essentially you have x hat is equal to c times y bar where c equals h hermitian h inverse times h hermitian y bar let me just write it a little bit more clearly so what i'm trying to say over here is that you have uh what do you have you have uh x hat equals h hermitian h inverse times h hermitian y bar which is equal to c times y bar where the c is the matrix h hermitian h inverse h hermitian y bar so you can see in this case for the zero forcing receiver x hat is op obtained via linear transformation y bar implies this is a linear receiver belongs to that therefore zf receiver belongs to the class of zf receiver belongs to the class of linear receivers there is one more linear receiver which is known as the lmms receiver linear minimum mean squared error receiver and we are going to look at that also in due course right so it's important at this point to remember that we have the zero forcing receiver which is in fact nothing but a very practical application of the concept of least squares and least squares estimation in the context of mimo wireless communication which is of course mimo technology is used in 4g 5g Wi-Fi, Edward 11N, Edward 11AC, pretty much most of the modern wireless communication systems that you know are based on multiple input, multiple output technologies. So naturally, you can see the extent, all right, the kind of wide applicability of this technique of this concept of least squares that we have learnt, right? And in fact, that's just one area of applicability. You have an immense number of applications of least squares and linear algebra in general, all right? And we have also done. a simple example to illustrate uh, uh, the specific application all right so let us stop here and we'll continue with other such applications and concepts in the subsequent modules thank you very much